Thanks, everyone. Um, my name is Griff Peterson. I am with Peer to Peer University. I'm going to be talking today about increasing equity with OER through learning circles. I'm here uh, on behalf of my teams, my colleagues. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. My colleagues are in Germany, uh, Canada, South Africa. Um, at P2PU, we uh, basically are a small organization. Our goal is to support informal learning rooted in the belief that learning and education is a social good, not a commodity. And the, main, the way that we primarily do this, uh, at least for the last few years, has been through learning circles. Learning circles are peer study groups that meet in public spaces or online this year for a set period of time to work through a topic together. Learning circles are free to participate in. They are free to start as well, and they always will be. We designed the program intentionally to reach first-time online learners and folks for whom higher education is not an option. We work primarily with adults, but also with some youth. And in addition to seeing very high retention rates for what's effectively going through an online course together, um, we're seeing people sticking around you know, 80 to 90% over the course of six weeks. We're also reaching people who wouldn't otherwise be benefiting from online learning. So we're really trying to create a low stake, low barrier way to engage in what is ultimately a formative learning experience. Um, this year has forced us, as it has for many of you, to sort of rethink our priorities and how we can sort of continue to deliver the services that we want to provide. We've seen some amazing community solutions, a lot of which are featured on our site and in our community forum. Uh, Los Angeles Public Library has started conference call learning circles for folks who don't have access to broadband internet at home. We've seen similar techniques happen with Kenya National Library Service over WhatsApp. Uh, the Public Library in Cologne, Germany has started uh, blended learning circles where some people are socially distanced at the library while others are home. And there's a whole wacky world of learning design that comes from sort of trying to create a supportive environment in that experience. Um, and then a fourth thing that we've loved to see is St. Paul Public Library has done a lot of makerspace education virtually where people will design 3D objects at home over a virtual learning circle. They get printed at the library and then sent out to people's homes. So it's a really nice way to keep this relationship going between the library and the community during the pandemic. Um, as you can tell, uh, our volunteer facilitator community is really sort of the heart and soul of the work that we do. Uh, many of these people are library professional for professionals, but not all of them. As I've said, you know, anyone can get started facilitating. We offer a number of trainings and resources to help. But the idea with facilitation is that you're a guide and you're not a subject matter expert. Uh, and the subject matter expertise is really left to online courses, open access educational resources that can be used to guide this experience. Um, so we work with hundreds of online courses from around the web. We do create some of our own courses, but many of them are coming from a number of providers and places that you're familiar with. We're always advocating um, for open license and using CC, um, but our main focus is maintaining longstanding free access for participants, uh, which means sometimes things stay behind a copyright. Sometimes if there's a popular resource that um, you know charges or something, we'll work with a vendor or we'll work with someone to see if we can figure out a way to keep this open for, for learning circles. Uh, we have a few hundred courses on our site now. Anyone can add resources. Most of it's in English, but we do a lot of work in Spanish, German, Portuguese, and a few other European languages right now. Um, we're a small team, so we, you know we're not trying to create new courses, but over the four years of doing this, we do have a good idea of what makes a course work well for learning circles. In addition to being freely accessible, we like to see low bandwidth, goal-oriented, materials that are framed as more of a workshop, more than a single workshop, less than a semester of work. It's linear in structure. We find that you know an open textbook can be very overwhelming for a non-content expert, so we do like the model of the online course. Um, we try to craft things for group discussion rather than user interaction and frame homework as further exploration. And I think the sort of theme to this slide and this idea is that there is no perfect course and that the best thing that we can strive for is to create the conditions for a group of people to make their own meaning around a topic of shared interest. So we've had the benefit this year of trying to put together some new tools and resources that can help people adapt and develop open access content to work for learning circles. We've made lightweight facilitator guides that are designed to learning circlify, um, to use a stupid term that I've made up, um, existing resources. Uh, we've created a guide that sort of outlines our pedagogy for how to create an open course for group study in a learning circle. And then we've made a number of changes to Course in a Box, which is our open source tool uh, that allows people to publish 
and share online courses through GitHub and Jekyll. And we've made that a lot easier this year so people without coding experience can get started. Um, and so what I really want to leave you with is four examples. We published all of these things in May. And in the last four months, we've seen some incredible projects. So I'll just spend the last minute reviewing these. But then my hope for the Q&A and, and further discussion with you all down the road is how we can get you all involved in adapting all the amazing work that you're doing to suit the Learning Circle community. We have an incredibly eager network of public library systems around the world who are eager to be working through new courses. And that's really what I'm here to, to learn from you all about. So the first is that these facilitator guides have allowed us to respond to immediate needs. Um, in May, Charlotte Mecklenburg Library took on a commitment to Black Lives Matter. And the first thing they did was create facilitator guides around existing resources like the New York Times 1619 Project and uh, the 21 Day Racial and Social Equity Challenge. Those are not openly licensed resources, but they're freely available. And by putting together guides, we've been able to get this, uh, these resources out in tons of different communities. Um, the second is disseminating research. We're working with researchers at NYU to create a course uh, that will be run and tested at Queens Public Library on algorithmic decision making. So this is academic research getting out in real sort of lowercase p public education. We're reaching new audiences by working with people who run face-to-face um, -face workshops and turning their research and their studying into online courses that are being piloted in library systems. And finally, we're connecting to credit and certification by working with community colleges and professional institutes to adapt their curriculum to free online courses that can get people on the pathway towards certification. Um, I will drop all of these links into the chat. I know I'm just over time now, but I'd love to hear any thoughts or feedback you have. And really, we're trying to grow this community of uh, subject matter experts who are creating better learning circle experiences for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Griff. That was excellent. I know when I started at Creative Commons 10 and a half years ago, the very first project I learned about was Peer-to-Peer -peer University. And I'm, I'm so pleased to see all the work you've you've done over time. Uh, the floor is open. If anybody has a question, feel free to type it in chat or unmute yourself and you can ask Griff directly. If no one else has a question, I just want to say I'm I'm super, super impressed. Uh, and, and the way you're thinking when you're designing this seems uh, really, really, really interesting in terms of collaboration and learning as a, as a, as a philosophy. So, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So I would encourage anyone to reach out to me if you have any textbook or OER that you love, that you care a lot about, and you want to see people using it out there in new audiences and new spaces. We're working and getting a lot of great feedback from people who are running this as a learning circle. So I'd really encourage you to reach out to me. Just send a link to something you like, and we can get that out there and, and see if we can get some communities to start using it. Griff, I've got a question. Uh, when, yeah. uh, when a lot of uh, you know what you might call mainstream education folks think about peer-to-peer uh, -peer university, oftentimes I think the first impression is, oh well, that's not for you know my formal classes. That's for informal learning. That's mm -hmm. for learning outside of the university or the school, or the community college or the TVET institution. Um, could you talk about? Um, are there is there like a remix happening? Do you see peer-to-peer uh, -peer university being integrated into uh, what we might consider to be you know, more formal learning spaces. Yeah, I think the exact example that I sort of breezed over at the end with College Unbound in Rhode Island was probably the clearest example. This is a, an accredited university that sees the value in a sort of peer learning model. And I think that, you know, there are, we don't have a copyright on the idea of learning in a peer setting. So this is, you know, this, some of this model has been happening many other places and we support that. Um, but I think what where we see ourselves fitting into formal education is by providing a bridge into more formal programs for folks who aren't ready to commit either time-wise or financially to a you know a four-year or two-year program. So by turning some semester-long courses into free learning circles that can still bear credit for people who are meeting at the library, we see that as being a really great way of sort of providing an onboarding into matriculation. Um, where instead of doing some sort of exam to get into a program, you're actually engaging in a real experience, learning something from it, and then you can decide if you want to take the next step to formal education or not. 